If there is one thing certain in life, it is that you and I and everyone else alive is going to die one day. Yet most of us are afraid to contemplate on our mortality. Hence, we rarely talk or hear about it. Even the word death is enough to scare some people. That's because in our culture, we have learned to see death as something terrible that we should shy away from, or else experience depression and anxiety, which perfectly explains the hiding away of the corpses, the fetishization of youthfulness, and the warehousing of elderly people in nursing homes. Our fear of death is also reflected in much of our everyday behavior. For example, many of us unconsciously try to gain as much financial wealth or material possessions as we can in order to feel secure. Being under the impression that our attachment to those things will somehow make our small and temporary selves big and permanent. Of course, no matter how big our bank account is, or how much stuff we call mine, we still feel insecure, because our insecurity doesn't really come from not having enough, but from not feeling enough. Having identified ourselves as tiny little egos, separate from the rest of existence and totally dependent on a decaying bag of skin, we naturally feel that death is our end. Is it any wonder then that we dread it? But what if we would see ourselves differently? What if we would see ourselves as a part or an extension of nature that we can never be separated from? Or what if we would see death not as a departure from life, but as a returning home to help perpetuate life? I am reminded of an insightful story that I read the other day, written by Thich Nhat Han. He writes, I asked the leaf whether it was afraid to fall, since it was autumn and the other leaves were falling. The leaf told me, no, during the whole spring and summer I was very alive. I worked hard and helped nourish the tree, and much of me is in the tree. Please, do not think that I am just this form, because this leaf form is only a tiny part of me. I am the whole tree. I know that I'm already inside the tree, and when I go back to the soil, I will continue to nourish the tree. That is why I do not worry. As I drop from the branch and float down to the ground, I will wave to the tree and tell her, I will see you again very soon. He continues by writing, Suddenly, I had a kind of insight very much like the insight contained in the Heart Sutra. You have to see life. You shouldn't say life of the leaf, but life in the leaf and life in the tree. My life is just life and you can see it in me and in the tree. I saw the leaf leave the branch and float down to the soil, dancing joyfully because as it floated, it saw itself already there in the tree. It was so happy. I bowed my head, and I knew that we have a lot to learn from the leaf, because it was not afraid. It knew that nothing can be born and nothing can die. As this story illustrates, death is not the end of life, nor opposed to it. On the contrary, it is an inherent process of life, a process, in fact, that makes life possible. And as death is inseparable from life, so yourself is inseparable from mine and the rest of existence. We are not discrete and separate egos, isolated in bags of skin, as our culture wants us to believe. Rather, we are unique expressions of universal consciousness in an interdependent and interexistent web of life. Now this might sound very abstract or philosophical, but everyone has experienced this sense of expanded, connected self during certain moments in life, such as moments of deep gratitude, love, meditation and communal belonging. So I won't bother trying to prove that we are inseparable. I will only state that by bringing this truth into our awareness, 
we can see that death is not something to be afraid of, for in reality, that is, from the perspective of the connected self, nothing can be born and nothing can die. Seen this way, death is not our enemy, but a friend to be embraced, even celebrated, for again, without death there would be no life.